Forget the Flash Gordon you thought you knew and get ready for three tales of pulp adventure when King Voltan races to escape mercenaries, Sheriff Gordon protects an Old West town, and Private Investigator Gordon works a missing persons case. Is an Elseworlds anthology starring the world's greatest pulp science fiction hero all it's cracked up to be? Let's find out in our review of Flash Gordon Quarterly Number 1 from Mad Cave Studios. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Flash Gordon Quarterly Number 1. Well now, Flash Gordon Quarterly is an unexpected treat. Fans of the classic space hero will be happy to see more than a little variety, a spotlight on somebody other than Flash for once, and an alternate take on familiar characters to get your imagination juices flowing. This isn't a classic true blue tried and true Flash Gordon comic, but there's a lot to like in here. We're going to cover each story briefly and what we like and where it's strong or weak, starting with the fall of King Voltan. King Voltan and his army fly to their kingdom while discussing the possibility of installing Voltan's son, Prince Talon, in a seat at the capital as a representative of the Hawkmen. Suddenly, King Voltan is attacked by a squad of Ming's mercenaries. During the battle, King Voltan is wounded, sending him hurtling to the forest below. Prince Talon rushes down to break his king's fall, but the rescue separates father and son from their ally. Can a stubborn king eager to protect his son and a prince who is eager to be all grown up work together to survive capture from Ming's hunters? Contrary to the title, Flash Gordon doesn't appear in this first story, which is the biggest and main story of the anthology, and that's okay. Flash gets a lot of attention. It's okay to give us attention to some of the other side characters. King Voltan takes center stage in an excellent adventure that mixes battle action, pitch perfect moments between a father who wants to protect his son and a son who is ready to be the man he needs to be, and a satisfying conclusion by Dennis Culver. Couple that fantastic story with fantastic art from Pasquale Quilano, and this story is, to be frank, a winner and probably the best of the three. In the Battle of Little Mingo, we catch up with Sheriff Flash Gordon and Deputy Dale Arden, who are cornered in one of the abandoned buildings of the town known as Little Mingo by a ruthless posse. Gordon begs Arden to hide while he gives himself up, but before he's gunned down by the waiting posse, Governor Ming rides in to inquire as to why the sheriff is willing to fight and die for an abandoned ghost town. The answer? Flash is a man who's willing to die for his home, whether it's populated or not. What follows is a duel offered up by Governor Ming for the right to own the town, winner take all. Lewis Southard's Elseworlds tale of lawmen and outlaws in the Old West is a quirky tale that presents a different version of the characters you already know with a twist. Readers who know and love Flash Gordon will find this short to be a unique take, and the conclusion is relatively satisfying. Plus, the art by Nuno Plati is commendable, to say the least. The third and final story is Flash Detective Services. We catch up with private investigator Flash Gordon as he takes on a case from the lovely femme fatale named Aura to find her missing fiancé, Baron Prince. The missing man is one of the few remaining politicians left in a very tough city, so P.I. Gordon scours the streets from low-level gangs to crime bosses to find the prince or die trying. Jordan Thomas's detective noir story hits the nail on the head with a clever bit of recasting by depicting Hans Sarkov as Watson to Gordon's homes, Dale Arden as one of the few non-corrupt beat cops still left in the city, and the Hawkmen as a gang of street toughs. Thomas wraps the story up with a solid ending and drops a hint for more cases in Gordon's future, which is a good thing, potentially. Further, Russell Olson's art evokes a familiar Dick Tracy aesthetic that blends the two properties very well. Final thoughts, what do we think about Flash Gordon Quarterly Number 1? Gives Flash Gordon fans a fresh twist on a familiar theme by recasting Flash in alternate worlds and genres to excite your sense of possibilities. Plus, the main tale, which is a tried-and-true adventure dedicated to King Voltan, is excellent. This issue isn't a classic Flash Gordon comic in the traditional sense, but readers in the mood for something different with characters that you already love will enjoy it quite a lot. Therefore... Flash Gordon Quarterly number one earns a solid 8 out of 10. In fairness, mixing Flash and Dale into different genres takes a little getting used to, but it worked out in this case. But what do you think? Do you like Elseworlds takes on familiar characters? Leave a thumbs up if you do, and drop a comment below with which genre you'd like to see tackled in the next quarterly. Also, remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review and buy this comic to help support the channel. That would be greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining, and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.